In today's video, I'm going to explain a common misunderstanding about how Visual Studio builds its Docker images. I'll be building the Docker file that was created in the previous video in a few different ways to show you what Visual Studio is doing for you behind the scenes. I'm going to be expanding on a lot of the concepts that I explained in that video, so if you haven't seen that one yet, I suggest you watch it first and come back to this one. So let's jump into Visual Studio and get started. I've got my project all loaded up and I'm just about ready to start my application in my local Docker container. Visual Studio does a few things to improve the startup time of the container. When I select Docker from the dropdown, it's automatically going to pull any images in the Docker file that are needed and it's actually going to start running some steps in the Docker file as well. If we look at the output of the container tools, we can actually see what it's done to start warming up the container. It's run a few commands and even gone as far as starting the container itself. Now, this doesn't actually mean that your application is running. In fact, if I were to go into the browser and try and hit the default endpoint, you're going to see that it's just going to time out because the application isn't actually running, even though the container is. If you wanted to run the application, all you would do is you would hit the play button, just like with a normal application, and you're going to see it's going to start the app in the container and allow you to interact with it, just like you normally would with any other type of ASP.NET Core app. So at this point, I want to backtrack a little bit and explain how the Docker file was actually built so that we could run the application. So what I've done to make it a little bit easier to follow what happened in the build process is I copied all the output of the build into a text file so we can read it a little bit easier. There's a lot of information in here, but there's really only three lines that are important to understand. The first one is the docker build command that's right here. The docker build command uses the docker file to create a docker image. If you recall from the previous video, Visual Studio has a setting that's enabled that allows you to build your container images a lot quicker than you normally could. It accomplishes that by passing in different parameters to the docker build command. The most important of those arguments is this one right here, target base. What that tells Docker is it tells it that it only needs to run the base stage of the Docker file. And if you'll recall, the base stage of the Docker file, all it does is pull the base image and set the working directory to the app folder. There are a bunch of other parameters, but we don't really need to worry about those right now. So you can see in the output that it's literally doing those two steps. So it's pulling the image right here and it's creating a working directory called slash app. And those are the only two steps that it runs in your Docker file. You can define any other number of steps for the base stage if you want, and it will execute those as part of the base stage, but anything that is not in base won't get run. That's really important to understand because I've seen a few cases where people make a change to the Docker file and they don't understand why it's not being applied. This is the reason. It's only running the base stage. Now that the image is built, Visual Studio can run the Docker image for you, and that's what it's doing in the command right here. Once again, it's passing a bunch of parameters to the command. We don't really need to know about too many of them. The only ones that are really important to understand is this one right here. The dash V command tells it to mount a volume and what it's doing is it's taking the folder where your application is on your host computer and it's mapping it to the app folder in the Docker container. It does the same for the source folder and a few other folders that it's going to need to be able to run your application. The other point of interest is the entry point parameter, which tells the Docker command what command to run when the container starts. As you can see, it's telling it to run the tail command rather than our actual application. The tail command is there just as a placeholder until you hit run in Visual Studio. At that point, Visual Studio will give Docker a command to start your ASP.NET Core app. If you're making changes to your code and you're recompiling, the application needs to be restarted to pick up those changes. That's why it doesn't give an entry point to the ASP.NET Core application. But what do you do if you actually want to build the entire Docker file? Well, luckily there is a setting in Visual Studio to do just that. All you've got to do is go on your Docker file, you right click, and if you do build Docker image, what you're going to see is it's actually going go to go through the process of creating your Docker image from scratch from your Docker file. This is actually going to run every single step that's defined. So if you added something somewhere in the middle of your Docker file, it's going to execute as well. 
Running the build docker image command from here is very similar to running a docker build from the command prompt. You can see that when we look at the actual docker build command that was run here. There's no parameter that's telling it to run only to a certain stage, which means it's going to build the entire docker file for you. You might want to build your Docker image this way if you've added some intermediate steps that you want to test and make sure that they're working properly in your Docker file before committing them and running them in your build process. And that's a very quick overview of how Visual Studio can create Docker images for you for local development. If you have any questions, make sure to put them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit like and subscribe.